This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Carbonite. Welcome back to another episode of Rumor Roundup. I'm your host, John Rentgis, the show where we round up all the rumors from the week. Up this week, we got a ton of good stuff. We got rumors of Verizon's 5-inch Droid DNA making an appearance. Did Apple fire Scott Forstall because he wouldn't sign the Google Maps apology? Forget quad-core, that's so yesterday. 48-core phones and tablets are coming. And the Nexus Q, is it a thing of the past? I'm John Rettinger, this is Rumor Roundup. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with the big phone rumor, both literally and figuratively. We've been hearing rumors of an HTC made Droid DNA, sometimes being referred to as the Droid DLX. For a few months now, it looks like it is finally going to be coming to fruition. If you've been looking at that Galaxy Note and thinking either, it looks awesome, 5.5 inches is too big, or it looks awesome, but I wish it had HTC Sense and HTC's build quality, you are going to be in luck. Droid Life, earlier in the week, found the Droid DNA name on Verizon support pages, and they're not going to support a device that they're not going to carry. Well, it's not always a sure thing, it'll make it to Verizon's airwaves. It is a pretty good indicator that we can see it. So let me refresh your memory from what this thing's going to be packing. It's going to have a 1080p HD display, an 8 megapixel camera, or possibly even 12, 2 gigs of RAM, quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro, Beats Audio, and Android 4.1 Jelly Bean on board. This guy is going to be packed to the gills with awesomeness. Think of this as the J Butterfly, but for the US market. Earlier in the week, Apple announced that Scott Forstall was going to be leaving Apple. Well, technically, he's going to be an advisor to Tim Cook, but that's just code for we don't want you to go anywhere else. So we're going to just pay you gobs of money and stop doing your job. Rumor has it that Forstall, the brain behind iOS, who's the main software engineer behind the operating system, was forced out because he refused to sign the Maps apology that Tim Cook ultimately signed. To refresh your memory, with iOS 6, gone was Google Maps and Apple unleashed Apple Maps, offering pretty awesome turn-by-turn -turn navigation, but was also met with a great deal of warranted criticism because points of interest weren't there, landmarks were all wonky, or things just weren't working as Apple products usually do. A few weeks later, Tim Cook issued a public apology and Scott Forstall did not uh, issue an apology. Now, rumor has it that he told the folks at Apple, this Maps application is not ready to go quite yet, but Apple forced ahead with it anyway. If those rumors are true, then maybe he shouldn't have been forced to apologize. Uh, if those are not true, then you know the operating system is under his watch he probably should have put his name on it. This might not be the worst thing for iOS users. They're gonna bring in a new engineer. We're gonna have Johnny Ive sort of taking over some of the software stuff. So we should see some new updates to iOS. Uh, in my opinion, Scott Forstall suffers from what's called the innovator's dilemma. Uh, the folks that innovate first and really bring a huge innovation to the world that really changes the way things are done, which I think iOS certainly is, sometimes fail to innovate again or keep the innovation up and eventually get passed by competitors. And I'm not saying iOS has been passed by Android, but in a lot of ways they're on par and sometimes you know, they go back and forth depending on the future you're talking about. So hopefully we will see a fresh revamped iOS. If anything, it'll be a new set of eyes looking at iOS, which can only mean good things for the consumer. So you know that shiny new quad core, dual core phone you got in your pocket that you're super excited about? That thing is slow. How about 48 cores? coming sometime in the next 10 years. Computer World has claimed that Intel is working on a 48 core chip coming out in the next decade, which is absolutely insane. If you think about it, the reason quad cores faster than dual core is all those processes can be split up over more cores. Imagine what 48 freaking cores can do. It would probably just be smarter than us. Take over the world, start a company called Skynet, kill us, and it all would be started from like a Nexus phone. Like a super Nexus phone. Is it just to see if they can? Is it a proof of concept? How many cores do we need? At the end of the day, it's still just a phone. You know, it can only play games so good. Graphics can only look so good. It can only make phone calls so well. You know, you can only do so much with a smartphone. Uh, but maybe in 10 years, technology will change. Maybe we'll have holographic displays and it can be, you know, like we saw in Star Wars and see Leia pop out of your phone asking Obi Wan for help. You know, who knows what 10 years is going to hold for technology, but it's awesome to see that trend already starting and sort of see the work that's going into it. I hope Computer World is right, and I hope that we can see a 48 cores, if nothing, just to say, boom, 48 cores in my pocket. 
What up now? So let's take a real quick break and thank our friends and sponsors at Carbonite. Carbonite Online Backup is automatic cloud backup for the computer files at your home office or small business. Just set it up once and Carbonite will protect your computer files. No hardware required at all. This is totally software. With Carbonite, getting lost files back is easy. Your employees can even access their backed up files on their smartphone, iPad with the free Carbonite app. Carbonite is the best backup plan for your home office or small business. Start your own free trial at Carbonite.com and offer code TECHNO and you'll get two free months if you decide to buy. Again, go to Carbonite.com, enter offer code TECHNO, get two free months if you decide to pick it up. It's a great way to go, make sure you don't lose your stuff. The so Nexus Q was unveiled at Google I.O. and folks who are in attendance had a chance to take one of those shiny little round objects home and we were one of the lucky few. We plugged it into our TV all excited and then realized, yeah, it doesn't really do much. Evidently, Google also realized it didn't really do all that much and they postponed it and now it's completely gone from the Google landing page. So what does that mean? Is it gone? Will it resurrect itself in another format? I'm inclined to believe the design, that really cool globe design with the glowing LED lighter around it, uh, will make a comeback in some form. But the Nexus Q as we know it, is essentially a way to get all the content from a Google Play Store into television is gone. There wasn't much of a need for it. With DLNA, you could do almost exactly the same thing. There was Google TV. Uh, this is very much a redundant product. It looked awesome. Crazy expensive, made in the US, uh, but it was absolutely a redundant product. So much as I hate to admit it, probably good riddance, but hopefully that design will somehow come back. So thank you for watching another episode of Rumor Roundup. We're back here every week rounding up all the latest rumors. Be sure to check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news, reviews, rumors, and everything else. I'm John Rettinger. I'll see you next video.